If we go to program files, I installed a few applications right here. Let's see. All right. So it's opened right here. Works fine. It actually works, guys. It actually works. I mean, everything works here. I mean, hey, guys, and welcome to Nomadic Dmitry channel. Today, we're going to talk about a very interesting topic. And this topic is running Windows applications on your Mac. And historically, there have been many methods of running your Windows applications on a Mac. For example, one of those options were running those in a virtual box, right? Virtual box of VMware. The second option was running those on the bootcamp basically on a separate separate partition but there has been always one other option which is running those applications natively for example this is the project which is called wine and if you're coming from Linux world for sure you know wine it was a very very big deal in the Linux community especially in the beginning when people started thinking about running Windows applications on the Linux and they basically developed win32 API from scratch like from open source and people were able to actually run those favorite applications on their Linux machines, which was cool. Then it was ported to other platforms like BSD. It was also ported Mac, as you can see, as I'm actually going to show you today. And it was really, really cool deal. Actually, there are multiple ways to achieve that. One of the first options is downloading the Wine directly from the Wine project website. And you can do that. It actually works just fine. But I prefer other methods because those are less complex and just like very, very user friendly. I prefer this method. This one is called Play on Mac and you can basically download this binary from the website playonmac.com and you can just like download this this whole binary as you can see it also has a comparison table which compares those uh, play on mac comparing to bootcamp and comparing to virtual machines and guys now we know that bootcamp is not an option anymore on the recent macs basically we have less and less options every day because i mean the world is changing everything is changing around us i prefer this option but there are actually more options another option is a crossover i actually had used to have a license for this one before but i'm not using this one anymore so yeah i mean you can also use that and looking at the description, it seems like it actually works on uh, Catalina and Big Sur. So this one is a good option. It seems to be working everywhere. But play on Mac, I'm using this one on the Mojave because I prefer Mojave. Mojave, in my opinion, like the best operating system Apple has developed ever in terms of compatibility and all that. For example, I'm still able to run iMovie 6. It was actually released in like when? It was released in 2006 and I can still run this application on the Mojave and I'm still like able to uh, open my old projects. It, you might probably have also similar reasons you might want for example to run microsoft office 2008 or 2004 well 2004 you cannot run anymore because it's power pc actually mojave doesn't support it but 2008 you should be able to run on your mojave but talking about catalina it doesn't support all that and actually there was a problem with all those solutions like play on mac crossover vine because they were not able to run on catalina and there were some problems with that 32-bit support but now i think they somehow managed that and it works better but i, I still feel like it's not that great i still feel that mojave is the best option if you want to run the old software. Also, another option is the Vine Butler. This idea is actually a bit different from all other solutions because here we basically package uh, the whole um, Windows application in just like one package, single package, and we just run it. And you can download it for the macOS Mojave and High Sierra. But as you can see, it doesn't work on Catalina. Yeah, and it's also available for older macOS versions, and you can also try that. I know that Windows game developers back in the day when actually people used to play Mac games nowadays is different back in the day people actually used to package everything using something similar like wine butler or other utilities basically so yeah this is another option and up to you if you want to use this one i personally prefer play on mac and i'm going to focus on that one today and show you how it works so when you open play on mac you're presented with this menu and you are able to basically start your favorite applications right from here and the thing is that when you actually start like install a program for example when you press this button it allows you to create like the instance of windows actually it creates like an instance of Windows 32 API. Well, not exactly Windows, but it's like open source versions of Windows 32-bit API implementation. And you're able to run your applications right in this like box. For example, I have two applications installed right here and it's a Total Commander and Photo Filter Studio. It's not exactly two applications. It's two instances of Windows installed here. And it's not exactly Windows. It's a Windows 32 API, basically open source implementation, like Wine implementation. Each of those instances, you can just like browse around. For example, you can open register editor for this one. And it actually opens register editor for this specific instance. Like how cool is that? You can just like move around, like modify stuff here. It's not only that. You can also like open the applications directory. It basically opens the folder on your hard drive. And it actually shows like where this application is located exactly. In this case, it's Total Commander. But you can also like browse around the file structure. For example, it has program files, program data, users, and windows. We're actually going to explore this one in a few seconds. So drive C, it actually includes all the stuff that's in, in the drive C. It's not the emulation. It's actually running. 
running on your computer. It's not in the file, it's just running on your system. How about we just run this one? When we press the run button, it actually opens the instance of this Win32 API. As you can see, it actually opened the total commander. Now we're able to navigate the file structure, right? Program files, program data, software that I have like installations here, total commander folder, and Windows. Everything looks like it's actually Windows, but it's not. So for example, you can open Notepad right here, and it opens Notepad. It's basically like Vine implementation of Notepad, right? All those solutions are based on Vine project. What else do we have? If you go to program files, I installed a few applications right here, and you can install applications in a very, very typical way. For example, uh, I just launched this one, and it opens the installation of this application, right? It's just a typical Windows installation of that app. Nothing complicated here, very, very simple. Of course, you can just install all those instances separately, and everything will be separated. But in my opinion, in this case, I just decided to install everything as a one instance, everything in just like one place. Well, that's why if we go to program files, we can open, for example, Notepad++. Let's see. All right, so it's opened right here. Works fine. How about we open something else? How about we open the Internet Explorer? Well, it's not exactly Internet Explorer, just like a Vine implementation of Internet Explorer. As you can see, just loaded the Vine project page. We can also open VNAP, for example. I installed the VNAP here, and when you launch it, it's gonna launch the real VNAP. It actually works, guys, it actually works. I mean, everything works here. I mean, I just love it. I mean, it's real Windows version of VNAP. You can also install like uh, Microsoft Office, like wherever you want, and it's gonna work fine. Fubar, for example, this one, it works just fine. You can also play your favorite uh, collection right here. It's gonna work. Uh, what else I have installed? I installed the WinRAR as well, and we can just work with our archives, right? In this case, it's a WinRAR application, and I can just like do the same thing I did on Windows, and I can just like have password protection, all stuff like that. I haven't found a good utilities related to archiving on Mac, so WinRAR is actually a good option here. Also, IRC, you can open this one as well. It's gonna work. You can just like chat as usual. Continue. Basically, that's what we have here. Exit. So those are the applications I installed right here, but of course you can install more applications if you want. I mean, it doesn't look super native. It looks still kind of strange, right? Because it like this whole UI is different, but at the same time, it's cool. I mean, I like it. And of course we can navigate the Windows folder. If we go to system 32, what do we have here? We have, for example, Wine Mine. This is like open source implementation of Mine. <laughs> you can just like play this one right here. Win file. It's a open source implementation of the file manager of typical file manager of the Windows era, three point something era. There's also a Wine configuration and you can just like configure stuff here. You can change like what, what audio device you use and stuff like that. It just picks up all your sound settings from your Mac. I mean, how cool is that? And of course we have a notepad and just a typical Windows notepad. It can just work like this. And I think if, even if you type like WinVer, it actually shows like version of Wine, of course. I mean, definitely it's not Windows. It's just like Wine. It's just licensed on that. I mean, it's just amazing job like done by all those guys who developed the Wine project. I just really like it. It just allows us to run applications and games on our Mac without any problem. The main problem that we have right here is that basically Apple doesn't care much about all those solutions and they just keep changing all the system stuff. Maybe in the next version of Mac OS we'll not be able to run anything, any, any stuff like that, right? So it's all changing, it's hard to trust. So, I mean, I don't know. Right now we do have the solutions right here. The only problem, I, I don't know how good it actually works in Catalina. Probably this one is the last Mac I'm gonna use and, and then I'm gonna move to Linux, I think. Maybe even install Linux on this machine, like right after Mojave is not supported. So this is the state of things, guys. I mean, I really like this kind of all those solutions, but again, you can only like pick the solution that you personally like and just like for your specific needs. Yeah, and it's gonna work just fine. You can even run the games here. So thank you for watching, guys. Please subscribe. Please press the like button and let me know what do you think. Thank you, guys.